in continuation of our discussion on discography till date you have completed eight sessions and today is the ninth session on discography before we start discussion about the mixed diffraction glass equation let us try to recollect what has been discussed in the last session that is session 8 in the last session we discussed about space lattice crystal lattice unit cell the bravais lattice and the miller and mason lattice and miller lattice so what is the bravais lattice what is the space lattice that we discussed in the last class and uh, just as a recap of what is a space lattice space lattice is that but a uh, two dimension representation of what arrangement of particles of a real crystal a crystal lattice is a three dimension arrangement of particles Whereas space lattice is a two-dimensional arrangement, where with the help of points we represent the arrangement of particles in three-dimensional space. So space lattice is nothing but array of points depicting the arrangement of particles in a three-dimensional crystal lattice. And we have seen a crystal lattice is nothing but three-dimensional arrangement of particles. Then we also learned what is a space lattice. Space lattice is the smallest repeating unit, which, when placed in three dimensions, gives rise to a crystal. So the properties of the intact crystal can be studied with the help of the properties of the unit cell. Because the unit cell represents the entire crystal lattice. And uh, we also learned what is the Bravais lattice. Bravais lattice. So Bravais, a French discographer, found that from mathematical considerations or geometrical considerations, he found that within seven crystal systems, fourteen types of arrangements of particles are possible. And in the last class, I have shown the fourteen types of arrangements. So when we consider the simplest system, that is cubic system, we learn that within the three uh, cubic system, there are three types of arrangement of particles. So one is the primitive cubic arrangement, where the particles will be present only at the corners of the cube. This is a, a primitive cubic arrangement. Second arrangement is body-centered cubic arrangement, where the particles are present at the corners of the cube and also at the center of the body. And the third arrangement that is possible in cubic system is face-centered cubic system, where the lattice points are. Corners of the cube, as well as each face center of the cube. Right. So these are the three types of arrangements possible in the case of cubic system. Like that, among seven crystal systems, there are fourteen types of arrangement of particles. So these fourteen types of arrangement of particles within seven crystal systems are called Bravais lattices. That's what we learned in the last class. And also, we have seen what are the characteristics of what? the seven types of crystal systems in the last class. So, with that background, today let us move on to the X-ray diffraction by crystals. So, what is the X-ray diffraction? Like electron diffraction matters. X-ray diffraction pattern helps us in determining the structure of a crystal. In the sense, whenever a beam of X-rays is made to fall on the surface of the crystal, the X-rays are diffracted. So, by these X-rays are diffracted by the atoms or particles of the crystal present in the crystal. Therefore, looking at the diffraction pattern, it is possible to determine the structure of a crystal. So, let us see today. In order to study the crystal structure. By X-ray diffraction method, the equation that is used is called Bragg's equation. So today we will be learning about the Bragg's equation. So we will be deriving Bragg's equation with the help of which the crystal structure is determined. So in order to derive Bragg's equation, let us look at the diagram. So in this diagram, let us see one, two, three, four. These are the planes of the crystal. One, two, three, four are the plates of the crystal, and the distance between the two successive plates is denoted by the which is called interplanar distance. And the dots which are shown here are the atoms or particles of this crystal. 
So dots are particles of the crystal and these lines are the planes in the crystal and now a beam of X-rays denoted by ABC. This is the beam of incident X-rays. ABC is the incident beam of X-rays. So when the beam of X-rays strikes the crystal surface, some of the X-rays will be reflected from the topmost plane. Some X-rays penetrate into crystal and get reflected at the second plane. And some other X-rays still go into the deep of the crystal and get reflected. So some other interior planes. So here the diag in the diagram I have shown a beam of X-rays falling on the crystal surface and they are getting reflected. So if the re reflected beam of X-rays is to be in phase, one condition is to be satisfied. What is that condition? Path difference divided by m lambda should be equal to. 2d sin Okay, so this is the Bragg's equation. Okay, path difference should be equal to for the reflected beam of x rays to be in space, path difference should be equal to integral multiple of wave length. Right, so this is the condition should be satisfied. If the reflected beam of X rays will be on the phase and they come out of the crystal. I repeat, if the beam of reflected rays are to, reflected X rays are to be in phase, the condition to be satisfied is that the path difference of the X ray beam should be equal to integral multiple of wavelength. And using this condition, Bragg derived. The equation is called m lambda is equal to 2d sin theta. That's what we are going to derive now. So let us consider a beam of incident x rays A, B, C, and D, E, F is the beam of a reflected or emerging x rays. So these rays, x rays, are reflected from different planes. And let us discuss or uh, restrict ourselves to the, these two x rays. So, C, X ray C, O, D is getting reflected from the topmost plane, and X ray B, M, E is getting reflected from the interior plane. And when you look at the path traveled by this X ray and this X ray in the crystal, this X ray travels a longer distance than this X ray, and also this is the extra path traveled by the X ray before it is emerging out of the crystal. So, the extra path traveled by this X ray can be calculated or measured by drawing the perpendiculars O L and O L. So, you draw perpendicular from O to this X ray and O to this line so that L M plus M L is the extra path that traveled by the X rays. So part of the difference is of Yam Yam plus Yam. Now let us try to calculate this part of difference, which is equal to Yam plus Yam. So in order to calculate this, consider triangles O L M and O L M. So in order to calculate the path difference, which is equal to L M plus M, we consider the two triangles O L M and O L M. So the, when you look at these two triangles, these are common triangles. Why? Because this is two angles are equal to 90 degrees, these two angles are equal to theta, this side O M is common. So the triangles are common. So that's the triangle O L M and O L M, which are congruent. They are congruent triangles. So from triangle OLM, 
So this is theta, this is perpendicular, and this is hypotenuse. Right? So from, this, uh, from triangle OOFM, sin theta, which is equal to opposite side by hypotenuse. So opposite side is equal to This is the angle theta, so this is the side opposite to this angle. And this is the side opposite to 90 degree, this hypotenuse, and this is the other side. Right? So sin theta is the opposite side by hypotenuse, that is LM divided by OM. Similarly, from triangle OMM, sin theta is a, this is the triangle. This is the opposite side and this is the hypotenuse. So, opposite side by hypotenuse is M and over OM. And we have seen OM is what? Is the interplanar distance. So, I can write it this as M and by D and this also I can write it as L and by D. Okay, so I have you read this. So when you look at the expressions, we have got uh, this is let us say this as equation one and equation two. So from equation one, Lm is equal to d sine theta, d sine theta, and from equation two, Lm is equal to L M is equal to d sin theta and therefore the path difference is equal to L M plus M M and this is equal to d sin theta plus d sin theta this is equal to 2 d sin theta so path difference is equal to 2 d sin theta and if this reflected beam of excess ought to be in phase, then what the condition is that all the difference should be equal to n lambda. Therefore, let us of n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta. So only when the part of difference is equal to integral multiple of wavelength of x rays, then only this reflected beam will emerge out of the crystal and it will be recorded. If they are out of phase, if this condition is not satisfied, such reflected beam so will be out of phase and they do not get cancelled within the crystal and they do not merge out of the crystal. Therefore, Reflected beam will come out of the crystal only when this condition is satisfied, and this is called Bragg's equation, where M denotes where M is a order of reflection and you can have as one, two, three, etc. If N is one is called first order reflection, if N is two is called the second order reflection. 3 is third order reflection. Lambda is a wavelength of x rays. And D is interplanar distance. What's my interplanar distance? Distance between two successive planes in a crystal. And theta is called glancing angle or angle of incidence. So, in the expression n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta, which is called uh, Bragg's equation, which is used uh, in determining this structure by x ray diffraction method. So, n stands for order of reflection, which is like as 1, 2, 3, etc. Lambda is wavelength of x rays, d is interplanar distance, and theta is a glancing angle. Right, so this is very, very important. And we shall solve some problems. Uh, based on this uh, Bragg's equation in the next class, in the next session. Thank you.